You win this round, now get back under your bridge. I'm Ashley with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 10 times anime trolled the fans. I'm sorry, but surprise, I'm actually a demon. <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at the moments in anime where the series itself pulled a fast one on us. Whether the results were hilarious or aggravating, as long as they managed to get as good, they count. And by the way, I'm on Twitter, so go follow me at AshJBo and let me know which time anime trolled you. Number 10, the greatest sword fight that we never got to see, Katana Gatari. As far as epic fight scenes go, this series is packed to the brim with them. And yet, we still can't get over that one time it blindsided us by completely skipping over what had been built up as a monumental clash. As per usual, Shichika and Togami are on the hunt for the legendary Deviant Blades which brings them into conflict with one of its owners. While you'd naturally assume we'd get to see said fights, instead it cuts to an entire side plot involving Shichika's sister slaughtering some C-grade villains. Are they to cut back to the lead duo post-victory, discussing what happened? The real kicker, they had a promo for the actual fight, which was never used. Number 9, Double Episode, Pop Team Epic. Right out of the starting gate, these two gave their audience a giant middle finger before taking them on a wild ride filled with more satire than we knew what to do with. After delivering the first half of each episode, the girls proceed with a follow-up that is strikingly similar to the first. In fact, it's always the exact same thing, only difference being they change the voice actors. Despite the fact they got some awesome voice actors to do the second halves, it ended up making it an incredible chore to watch. And if you thought you could just skip over it, well, too bad, because sometimes you'd be missing out on some new scenes every now and then. Hey, hey! Okotta? Okotte nai yo? Hey, hey! Okotta? Number 8, Fake Movie Trailer, Gintama. Fresh off the first Gintama movie, fans were looking for more, and what better way to announce a brand new sequel than to give fans a quick preview during one of the episodes. Depicting a fierce battle against the invading Amanto forces, we see Gintoki, Katsura, and the rest slaying their way through endless hordes of opponents, lamenting their life choices, and generally giving us the origin story that we've always wanted to see. Only for Gin to appear at the end and declare that it ain't happening. You did us dirty Gin. そういや、視聴者のみんなもそろそろ気づいてると思うけど、え、何がですかいや、この劇場第2弾の話だけど、何もやるわけねえだろ。Number so yeah, yeah, 7 Endless 8, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. We're currently stuck in a time loop, reliving the same period of time over and over again. Yeah, you already said that. You know it, we know it, this set of episodes is a massive exercise in endurance. We're being forced to repeat every day between August the 17th through the 31st. In other words, we're in the middle of what seems to be an endless summer vacation. Well, at least it's summer vacation, right? Being trapped in a time loop isn't a new concept and has been done well in other shows. We'd even go as far as to say the first three times we follow the SOS Brigade through the same summer day is quite endearing. But to go through said cycle five more times, and even be teased and ending multiple times only to go through the motions at the last second, is just too much. Even for Haruhi. 
What's she been saying all this time? I don't know. I can't remember. Number six, fake kaiji. Mr. Tonigawa, middle management blues. Look, we weren't expecting the ultimate loser to become a regular star of this spin-off, but considering that this is a spin-off, it would have been nice to at least get a cameo. Domo. For a moment, it looked like the show had the same idea when Tonigawa encountered a guy who looks exactly like Kaiji. And they for it to be some randomer dressed like him for no reason whatsoever, other than to jab fans in the gut. Watanabe -kun. Watanabe desu. Just hurry up and make a third season already. Number 5, it is I, Joseph. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. There are granddad jokes, and then there's Joseph Joestar. Huh? Ah, his eyes! He opened his eyes! We did it! He's back! Only he would take the opportunity, seconds after being brought back to life via an emergency blood transfusion, to rattle his heavily wounded grandson by making him think that by using the blood of the recently slain Dio, that he has accidentally brought the vampire back from the dead. Naturally, Jotaro tries to knock his ass flat, only for Joseph to immediately confess that it was just a prank, bro. Hmm, all you've done is resurrect yours truly, bastard! Wait, calm down, Jotaro! It was a joke! I was just kidding! Still surprised Star Platinum didn't break his perfect jaw for a stunt like that. Who's saying eat it, the spoof of beat it? Weird Al Yankovic! Good grief, it has to be you. Who else would know pointless crap like that? Number four, the perfect ending, almost. Hyoka, you were so close, Hyoka. You could have given us the ending we all wanted. Instead, you gave us a fake out that may have remained true to the characters, but holy cinnamon rolls, was it frustrating. Just when we thought that Araki had confessed his feelings to Jitanda, let's be honest, we all would, it turns out that he hasn't said a word, and his confession is just in his head. Ego, we don't get the pairing we had been dying to see get together from the get-go, and she remains a single Pringle. <laughs> Number three, history does not repeat itself. Boruto, Naruto Next Generations. Evidently, the Will of Fire is only interested in Yaoi. In an almost shot for shot callback to the time Naruto and Sasuke accidentally locked lips, Boruto and Sarada found themselves moments away from sharing in their father's misfortune. Given the likeliness that these two may head towards headcanon territory, you can imagine many were rooting for Cupid to strike again. <laughs> Only, it turns out that Sarada has better reflexes compared to her dad when he was her age, since she shuts that shit down fast. Number two, one Mikazuki, too many. Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron Blooded Orphans. This is just cruel. We had just watched Mika lose his life during the final battle against Gallahorn, all before he and Barbatos got their heads removed courtesy of Queen Plank Julieta. Here and now, by the grace of Rustal Elion, commander of the Ariane Rot fleet, the demon has finally been slain! Yeah! That was a tough pill to swallow, which was made all the worse following the time skip when we see a silhouette of Mika approaching an aged up Kudelia. <laughs> was he alive after all? Did he somehow survive the Gundam kiss? No, it's just his and Atra's son who has an identical hairstyle. Didn't know that was genetic. You liar! Good boys don't run around and play with the clean laundry now, do they? 
Not quite at the end yet, almost there though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Alright, back to business. Number 1. Ash loses the Alola League Or does he? Pokemon. You just couldn't resist, could you? You knew that every fan was paranoid that Ash was going to lose this latest tournament because he's Ash mother flipping Ketchum. During the Alola tournament, Ash battles his rival Howe, and in all too familiar fashion, loses when his Rowlet appears to get wrecked by Decidui. <laughs> However, all is not as it seems, as Hala suddenly points out that Rowlet is, in fact, asleep, allowing the match to resume for some reason. <laughs> not sure what's more infuriating, the fact that this might be the sketchiest battle of Ash's career, or the possibility of him getting away with this and potentially losing again later down the line. Mm. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.